All right, my name is Nate Richardson, and I'm going to share some highlights that I, some notes that I have on Jane Birch's Discovering the Word of Wisdom, a Whole Foods Plant Based Perspective. And these notes are free at richardsonstudies.com. Jane Birch did some really great work here, and uh, um, she's been gracious to allow these detailed notes to be shared. So let's get right in here. That's what the book looks like. Uh, the chapter one is Awakening to the Word of Wisdom. Chapter two is The Flesh of Beasts. Chapter three is Wholesome Herbs and Every Fruit. Chapter four, All Grain is Good. Chapter five, What About Dairy and Eggs? Chapter six, Science and the Word of Wisdom. Chapter seven, Common Objections. Chapter eight, Stewards of Our Bodies, the Earth and Its Creations. Chapter nine, Why Doesn't the Earth Tell Us These? Why Doesn't the Church Tell Us These Things? Chapter 10, The Promised Blessings. An introductory note here. These, uh, yes, let's see here. Uh, yeah, the book's way longer and better. This is just an introduction to some main ideas. Um, and an interesting thing that I like to point out is that these things that it talks about here could be applied to other topics. Um, the idea that we want natural foods, you know, in their whole complete form as found in nature and according to what the scriptures say that we should focus on. This could apply to music, the idea of what to focus on and what to eliminate and what to use sparingly when needed. It can apply to finance, avoiding debt, cutting out borrowing, how we spend our time, etc. The word of wisdom typically applies to physical health, but when we unlock it, we can find more wisdom readily in all areas. Perhaps wisdom in health is a prequel or at least a sure key to wisdom in other domains. All right, and uh, you can become certified, uh, I'm not sure what they call it, WFPB person. Um, and then there's a lot of suggested books here. You'll find what page is there to go for those. So chapter one, let's dive in. Awakening to the Word of Wisdom. Dr. Grupa speaks of WFPB, whole food plant-based, as the heart attack proof diet that eliminates the possibility of heart attack. Dr. Caldwell Esselstein reversed all his patients' CAD by WFPB. The taste buds will change. No calorie counting is needed, so you're never so you never go hungry. The this is hidden in plain view, but many ignore it. And I'll say it's kind of uh, interesting how when you see a food. You can look at that food and you can tell instantly if that food is something that you should be uh, eating, you know, by intuition, you can see this is either healthy food or not a healthy food, but we're out of touch with that uh, spark of, of uh, discernment. We're all brainwashed, I guess. Okay. Um, eight days in and you'll enjoy it. WFPB dramatically drops your LDL and total cholesterol levels by 30% or more, which is how much a statin drug would, perhaps even more. WFPB relieves knee issues and mental issues. 70% of what we believe to be regular aging is actually optional. Some unhealthy elderly or late adults say, you're just wait your turn, it's coming. But it doesn't have to be like that. Uh, suggest the Forks Over Knives documentary. Okay, chapter two, The Flesh of Beasts. The DNC, our most current revelation on health, says use meat in winter or famine to save your lives. We don't have those right now. We have the year-round groceries. We have the, you know, the abundance. Plants can, unlike animals, synthesize organic materials from minerals air, sunlight, thus they are the true source of nutrients. For example, the cow doesn't make protein, it eats it, and we drink milk and we get it secondhand. More than enough, uh, there's more than enough protein in your WFPB, over 10% of calories. And uh, something that I found out not long ago is that every single whole food has all three, protein, fat, and carbohydrate, even a carrot. It has protein. It has fat. Obviously, it's a carbohydrate, mainly. But all these natural foods, they have all three. 
So if you're if you're basically just eating plants and grains, you know, you're still getting you're getting all three food groups. The DNC says plants for nature and constitution of man, they should be the core. Use meat as a backup source, not a primary. Disadvantages of meat, which don't apply to plants, include too much cholesterol, too much protein, too much fat, wrong type of fat, too few essential nutrients, too much of some nutrients, no phytochemicals, no fiber, too many hormones and antibiotics, and pesticides. Yeah. Uh, give, to, uh, give to animals to get... they. Uh, yeah, the hormones and antibiotics given to animals to get them fat and keep them from getting sick. Too many pollutants, microbes, pesticides, herbicides. Yeah, obviously, certain types of microbes. Mm -hmm. So just think of that whenever you're going to um, indulge. Uh, think of all that crazy stuff you're getting. Protein, like oxygen, is abundant in nature, not something to worry about. And what should you worry about? Uh, fiber. That's what people should be worrying about, is getting their fiber. China study showed cancer in rats from animal protein, but vegetable protein didn't lead to cancer. China study, the book, T. Colin Campbell. And if I didn't say this already, I will say every now and then I just throw in my uh, little rants and personal things. And uh, I try to differentiate between Birch's material and, and my rants, but sometimes it's not always 100% clear. So it's part of why I have the text here. A lot of these things I do are mainly to where you can throw it on the audio and, and go about your day, but sometimes the video portion of it can help as well. Uh, let's see here. In whole foods, we get the advantage of amino acids producing precise combinations needed. This doesn't happen if you oil everything. Don't gamble your health by betting on some fad diet being better than the DNC. Report in six weeks of this, uh, yeah, some report in the book, uh, they went from cholesterol 238 to 164 or 201 to 138, etc., and lost 15 pounds. So people, you know, there's some there's some success stories there, obviously. Hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see here. Calorie for calorie, broccoli has more protein than a steak. Chapter 3, Wholesome Herbs and Every Fruit. Whole foods have many phytochemicals like alkaloids, carotenoids, flavonoids, isoflavones, organosulfides, phenolic acids, phytosterols, saponins, etc. Even many not yet discovered. And it's this idea that the apple is this extremely complex thing that we don't even um, really understand. And when we want to take these nat nature foods and do them our own way or isolate vitamins in a pill, you're just missing out on probably, you know, 90% of the, of the intended benefits. And it's what's crazy is um, uh, people who do this, they, uh, you know, the, the the excess fat falls away almost effortlessly, and uh, you know, a big point here is that it's not just a vegan diet; it's a healthy diet. <clears throat> yeah, you're getting rid of your animal products because you don't need those, and they're usually trash, but you're also not having the synthetic white flowers and the you know the synthetic sugars and the processed foods phytochemicals in a whole food work together in a symbiotic way nutrition is a young science we are just scratching the surface 
We can't really improve on God's creation by our supplements. Just eat the food as found in nature. DNC says to eat wholesome plants. That also suggests seeking a whole form, not an oil form, or refined or other ways. Yeah. Uh, real food is alive and should eventually die. Preservatives thus aren't good and sap much nutrition. DNC also speaks of using food in the season thereof. Mm -hmm. Modern foods are too concentrated. Same with cocaine. The leaves aren't addictive. It's the concentration it's sold in. Now. Hold on, let me finish this, okay? Okay. Okay, go upstairs. Modern foods are too concentrated. Uh, the same with cocaine. The leaves aren't addictive. It's the concentration it's sold in. Eat naturally, and you can avoid addictions common in the standard American diet. President Packer speaks of many things not specifically listed in the Word of Wisdom which are harmful. Um. I was uh, just reading a book where this guy was talking about how he goes for his word of wisdom, you know, his temple and recommend interview. And uh, the guy says, do you keep the word of wisdom? And he says, no. He's like, what? You're smoking, drinking? No, 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 no. But he says, I'm eating meat in the summertime. <laughs> and uh, uh, not getting a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables and exercising. And, uh, of course, we're pretty casual on on these things. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's crazy because when you're only doing the don'ts of the Word of Wisdom, you're missing out the major blessings of the Word of Wisdom that it's intended to have. Um, I heard someone recently say, makes a lot of sense, that only the wise follow the Word of Wisdom. And then... Uh, Um, yeah, but I feel pretty strongly that you'll have a lot of, um, you know, to the extent that I have been successful with this, uh, I still consider myself a, a white belt, but, um, to the extent that I have been successful, I've definitely seen rapid blessings and, and this is, like I said, the springboard to, Mental clarity, you know, you're going to do, you're not going to be aging, you're not going to, as much, you're not going to be uh, getting all that brain fog, and you're going to be able to do a lot of the things you want to do in your life. You know, you're going to get your life back. It's what people are saying over and over, who just have all these success stories. There's that uh, From from Donuts to Potatoes book, where this lady just, she's like, I got my life back. Like, it was like a dream. Like, how did I go so long? And then you hear people. You know, another thing that's, you know, when you're in a exercise routine, it's like, hey, I'm, you do that, you know, exercise, and it's like, why do I convince myself that this is not good? Um, because you feel so much better after it. Um, I saw somebody had a funny shirt the other day. It said, "Runners high, still legal in all 50 states." Um, and one of my favorite comments. About the word of wisdom, Joel Skousen, he says, uh, How do we expect to run and not be weary and walk and not faint if we never walk and we never run? So that's pretty good. And he's also really good about um, advocating that we got to, you know, just eliminate junk food, you know? And uh, it's just, for, you know, it's not, it's not right. And uh, another thing I like, Hugh Nibley, he says, you know, candy's for kids. You know, don't mess with it. And drink water is what he says. Um, it's kind of kind of crazy because every now and then, you'll, uh, at least for me, I'll be all bogged down by all these ideas um, of, you know, oh, justifications, this and that and this and that. But then I'll hear this example of somebody or a friend. Um, or something to where, you know, who's actually living the word of wisdom, like, excellently, 
And it's like, you hear their stories and it's just like, yeah, obvious. It's so obvious. That's what I need to do. And, uh, and then you try it and you have extreme success. Unfortunately, um, the devil keeps, keeps knocking and it's hard to, sometimes when you're, you know, it's hard to avoid that. So let's get back into this here. Um, let's see. Refined plants and oils have way more calories than whole food, whole food version. For example, one cup of sweet corn is 130 calories and 10% fat, but two tablespoons of corn oil is 250 calories and 100% fat. Adding vegetable oil to a plant-based diet just adds unneeded calories. And something that I like that, uh, I think it was John. Okay, I'm trying to record something, so can you go upstairs, please? Thanks. Okay, can you go upstairs, please? Thank you. Okay, it's all right. Uh, let's see, I think it was John McDougall who says, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. And this isn't like an anti-fat fad. It's just saying that the whole foods already have plenty of fat in them. Okay. Let's see here. Um, eating fats, monosaturated like olive oil, leads to less cholesterol than bad fats, but both lead to CAD. Some things resolved by WBET FPB eating include UTI, acne, eczema, PMS, emotional issues. Um, and with the acne, really quick, that's a, you know, if you're eating oily stuff, that's the problem. It's not like from putting your hand on your face, like some people say. Um, it's get out all the heavy oils from your uh, grease and oils, and you're going to be a lot better off with that. Um, emotional issues, uh, and Raynaud's, blood sugar imbalances, arthritis, less hypoadrenalism symptoms. Um, and again, with the blood sugar stuff, well, what they're finding is that with the diabetes, your insulin uh, receptors are clogged with the fat. So then you eat your fruits and your, your, your blood sugar skyrockets. But if you get rid of that fat, uh, that's clogging it, that's from all these fatty foods, these meats and cheeses and all this, um, and processed foods, fried foods, then you're going to um, be able to eat all the fruit you want. And that's uh, Cyrus Simbada, I think is his name, with his Mastering Diabetes and all their clinical stuff and their heavily referenced book on that, where they can pretty much eat all the fruits they want. And uh, anyway, um, I, the whole food plant-based perspective, it's not a uh, famine in the wilderness. Um, it's a delicious, abundant life. Um, and it's a satisfied life where you uh, those cravings go away. The, you know, the weaknesses that the foods are built to give you, the processed foods are built to give you, you stop with the processed foods and your body stops craving them, it's all this. So again, back to the taste bud changing thing as well. And when I'm doing good at this, I'll, I'll eat like, I had an orange the other day. I was like, hey, oranges are like my favorite fruit. Because uh, I could appreciate more how delicious an orange is and how that was like the best treat ever. Um, so anyway, Hugh Nibley, he talks about how, how we should be fasting every day and all the time. And it's this perspective that we're not spending all of our time and our energy on, you know, cooking fancy things. And, and there's this Eliza, Eliza R. Snow Smith quote, where she's talks about that same thing that we're not going to you know, try to be like the coolest party with all the coolest dishes, you know, catering. We're not, you know, as, as Zion women, we're not going to be slaves to the kitchen. You know, we're going to serve and, uh, but we're not going to be like focused on having all the trendy foods and all the most fanciness because we got better things to do. Um, like teaching our children and, you know, 
and you know learning and and teaching and leading and, and there's all that um but anyway this nibbly idea of always fasting um it's basically this uh you're you're not you know you're not worrying about all these fancy foods and you have the simple foods and that's enough enough is enough and nibbly likes to say more than enough is more than enough and i think he points out where brigham says uh you when you take more than what you need you're taking what does not belong to you and that's this principle that you know oh like uh it's a buffet i paid for it i get to eat all i want no it's god's food that grew in god's nature okay go upstairs man let me finish this okay thank you it's god's nature it's it's his food that he caused the sun he caused all this uh and uh he provided the nutrients and it belongs to him um and when we take more than enough we're taking what doesn't belong to us um so we should you know we might not cure world hunger all on our own but we can be personally accountable for for not being gluttonous and it's hard because you know like joel Furman points out he says you become a calorie consuming monster when you're eating all these processed foods because it sets these things going in your body to where uh you can't you know you have minimal control and it's it's definitely addiction um a lot of times we think of addiction it's like oh the hard drugs and the all those different kinds of smoking and and uh you know or the pornography but the foods um you know i think it was uh mick jagger maybe it was some rock star he said sugar was the gateway drug that led him to cocaine or something like that I'm doing recording for a few minutes okay uh so the um yeah the sugar is this gateway drug and really you know it's like when you're getting these unnatural things whether it's something that seemingly harmless as some sugar when you're getting these unnatural foods you know it is setting yourself up to fail in bigger ways as well so let's see here okay so some more things resolved by uh get rid of these blasted notifications when you're um some things resolved by WFPB eating again, um, restoring your color in your cheeks, decreasing pain and weight. Um, <clears throat> let's see, less allergens and asthma as well. Okay, chapter four all grain is good. Staff of life, as it says in DNC, means the staple food for life. We're in an upside down society that says eat lots of meat and little carbs. It's, um, especially little wheat wheat is endorsed by god and it's the first thing many attack some are glucose intolerant but human history shows that's the exception not the rule also i hear the glycophosphate pesticide is uh in the wheats a lot of the times is what gets a lot of people as well and some people can start to build a tolerance back by having some sourdough from what i understand anyway um something that you'll see is i as I make these presentations is my ignorance will shine through and uh, I'm just you know I find a little bit of information and I share it I don't claim to be an expert on everything but I also don't claim I don't believe that we need to rely on you know just experts doing all the work uh, so I'll I'll find stuff and share what I find and uh, it's okay if I don't understand everything and if I'm not perfect at everything um yeah so wheat's under attack um and i had a friend talking to me the other day at work and he's a, a older guy and he's in very pretty good health and he was saying he'll just have some homemade bread like some of that th good old thick wheat bread and boom he's got energy for hours and uh this is where he couldn't sleep at night and then uh and then the next day he was tired so he took some more of the bread and boom he was good to go now there is something to the idea of having a small amount of bread to even help you go to sleep but anyway i wish there was somewhere you could buy this you know homemade bread of course it wouldn't be homemade but just that thick bread you know that um and 
anyway, it's from what I can tell, I haven't found it anywhere. So I'm trying to look into making bread more. Uh, six foods sustained life historically. Barley, corn, millet, potatoes, rice, wheat, getting a bulk of calories from starch. Eating starches like corn and potatoes helps us not take all day to get enough calories like it does for grazing cattle. Paleolithic people actually got most of their calories from carbs. Their ancestors were nearly vegetarian. Societies living on mainly animal foods are historically scarce and, ex and are exceptions, not the norm. Yeah, and the fossil, the micro fossils uh, demonstrating the, all the plants they're eating and all this. That's another thing. In China, before McDonald's and the American diet came there, they were the healthiest people. They ate mostly rice and noodles and veggies, and they lived the longest. The word of wisdom was given for our day when disease is mostly from food intake. Back in Joseph Smith's time, most disease was communicable, spread from person to person, lack of hygiene, sterility, etc. But the word of wisdom was focused on helping us in our day when food choices are so vast. And of course, there's the war of philosophies of what's the best and it kind of breaks my heart when i see people who you know they do the keto and they do the atkins and the south beach and and you know oh hey i lost all this weight but yeah then i gained it all back plus some and it's like okay well you just lost a bunch of muscle mass and gained it back as fat and you're setting yourself up for heart failure the heart was not meant to live on ketosis and and no um carbohydrates um when you cut out you know there's Right, the macronutrients, protein, fat, and carbohydrate. And if you get rid of one of those three, you die. You know, like disease and then death. Um, but in a plant-based diet, you're you're not cutting out protein. You're getting it from more natural sources. Um, yeah. But anyway, what I'm saying is, it's it's sad when you see people in the church, particularly, who do the you know, the, the, you know, the meat diets, because it's like, we have revelation that says that's not the way. And that's a philosophy of men that, uh, that that's the way to go. Now, yeah, they can lose a lot of weight sometimes because, um, well, for one, there's the whole ketosis thing, which isn't sustainable. Um, but for two, a lot of times they're cutting out all the junky processed breads like, yeah, nobody should be eating that. Nobody should be eating donuts. Nobody should be eating, you know, all this kind of nonsense. Uh, you know, even your typical white bread uh, or your white rice. Like, get the brown rice. Like the old saying, the whiter the bread, the sooner you're dead. Um, so a lot of times when people go keto, they're cutting out a lot of the stuff that they should have cut out. And sometimes they add in, you know, Sometimes they'll eat more salad, and that's always going to help. Um, one of my favorite things about salad, the, I like Joel Furman. He says that uh, these leafy greens in a five-mile race between all the foods, all the vegetables and fruits and stuff, of what's the healthiest, uh, the, um, the leafy greens win by four miles. Um, anyway. So, the way we eat and feed our children is equivalent to how people used to mingle with others who had bubonic plague or typhoid fever. In other words, we're, we're all falling over dead from, from heart failure. And it's funny because there's that script that says in the last day men's heart will fail them. And, you know, that's, that could definitely be related to nutrition as well. And, of course, we're getting a lot of these mental problems where... Uh, um, you know, this is going on, uh, from, from the nutrition. And if that's a hard pill for you to swallow, you got to get in and learn more about this because it's just a fact. Uh, and I've heard of a story where at a prison, they fed the inmates like beans and like soup or something. And, um, and they all the the behavior problems at the prison like went down fifty percent or something. So anyway, um, I've seen it at some facilities where they just give these kids the nastiest foods. It's the same with hospitals. It's like, 
all this fried food for breakfast and like uh, like Joe Furman says it's cake for breakfast cake for lunch and cake for dinner it's like crazy you know we have the pancake and then we have the the you know uh whatever uh the pizza cake and the you know the uh all kinds of craziness but uh there's definitely so much nutritional ignorance just um so and kids will be more sassy and fussy and sickly if we're not uh on board with with true true nutrition so let's go on here chronic diseases today are preventable yet 1.7 million die from them every year and that's right chronic disease is preventable and reversible i will say genes load the gun but behavior pulls the trigger non-communicable diseases like ones that can be prevented by diet are a leading factor of death now everywhere but africa but africa is closely following suit when we eat more calorically dense meat we eat less of other stuff i.e stuff with nutrients like grain and that's a big problem with with the with the meats and the dairies like sure you'll get plenty of protein and and uh fats but are you getting the phytonutrients are you getting the you know the vitamins and minerals you're getting some but not nearly as much as with um your whole foods and plant foods food selection choices are highest today more so than ever thus the word of wisdom is key for our time 90 percent of turkey has disease causing organisms which are resistant to antibiotics uh, many antibiotics are becoming ineffective for humans because they're use, used so much on animals we should instead focus on keeping antibiotics vital for when we need them and not waste them on animals we get resistant when it's introduced to animal or human so shift the focus away from animal eating. 23,000 die per year from antibiotic-resistant infections, more than die from HIV-AIDS. Even being 10 pounds overweight makes you functionally much weaker. You can't be middle ground on this. And there's, I think it was a, a BMI of 21 is the average of the longest living peoples, not this 23 and 25 stuff that, that people say is normal. And uh, I'm pretty sure Furman points that out. So um, I had a I had a friend recently that uh, was talking about her grandma. Um, uh, who was doing this raw diet, just like blending her vegetables and just eating that all the time, and and like. My friend's like, hey, is this, is she okay? Like, she lost a ton of weight, and, and she's really active now, and 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 energetic, and, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, she's fine. <laughs> like, that's what we should all be doing, right? Now, of course, you can't just do the blended, um, you know, the three, you know, veggie blends a day. You You need to mix in some healthy grains and nuts and seeds as you go but in the um you know in the documentary uh, i don't remember what it's called uh anyway this guy who does the the veggie uh blends three times a day and that's what he eats for like 60 days and he like loses 100 pounds or something or i don't remember the span but i think he doubled it and did it longer and stuff and he's a really healthy guy now and anyway Joel Furman was his consulting doctor in that. So um it's uh pretty solid that yeah, don't worry. Like <laughs> if that's what you're doing, like more power to you. And that's you know, you're you're gonna be doing yourself a favor. Um you know, juice cleanses is, is good stuff. And Joel Furman has a book on fasting for health curing diseases with fasting you can do a water fast you can easily do a seven day water fast you can even do a 21 day you'll probably want to be in touch with your doctor people have even done a couple months and that 
definitely need doctor on board for that. But, uh, you know, I, I did a, I think I did a three day water fast as much as I've done at this point, but uh, it's not, uh, and they say after, you know, after that, it gets a lot easier and stuff, but it's, it's not quite as horrifying as, as folks make it out to be. And then like Nibley said, always be fasting. So it's like you get, you can get used to this life where you're, you're actually eating a more normal, uh, amount of food and it's not as crazy. Um, when you're eating the excessive food constantly and junk food constantly, fasting is this big, scary thing. But when you're eating healthy, fasting is not a big stretch and not a big scary. So chapter five, what about dairy and eggs? Dairy is like liquid meat and isn't the source of any nutrients. It has too much protein, fat, cholesterol, calories, hormones, bacteria, pollutants, even if it's from happy cows. It has pus in it too. That protein is highly carcinogenic. And what's funny is, uh, gr uh, what's his name? Greg? Dr. Michael Greger. He has this uh, thing where he shows how it's um, illegal to advertise eggs as healthy. Not right now. Okay. Go upstairs. Um, so you'll see, whenever you see this uh, vehicle, this truck advertising eggs, it's like a natural way to start your day or a fresh way to start your day. But it's illegal to say it's a healthy way to start your day because it's, it's so dense in that uh, cholesterol and, and other stuff that it's like, no, that's not a healthy way to start your day. That's funny because uh, now I notice that whenever I see an egg advertisement, uh, billions of people around the world are healthy without consuming any dairy. The U.S. has lots of milk, but a very high rate of osteoporosis. Get calcium from plants, the original source with the highest absorption potential. And from what I hear, you need to be physically moving your body, uh, getting some exercise, putting some pressure on those on those bones to avoid osteoporosis is a really big part of it. Um, and uh, I don't know how much this book talks about it. I don't remember, but uh, the industry and the advertising and the and the you know the subsidies. It's just crazy what goes on. Um, there's a fun book on uh, salt, sugar, and, and fat that goes into some of that too, of the marketing of it all. Um, let's see here. Dairy can neutralize needed act, needed acidity, so nutrients come out of our bones to restore it. Thus, we have weaker bones when we use dairy. Adult mammals in the wild don't consume dairy. We don't need nutrients that baby chicks need. We don't, so don't eat eggs. We have different needs than a baby cow, so don't drink cow milk. President Hinckley said, don't justify eating bad stuff just because it isn't specified in the word of wisdom. WFPB helps fertility. It brings energy you had 30 years ago. And, you know, it's somewhat related. There's this popular running t-shirt where it's like, you know, everybody says running sucks, right? But this t-shirt says not running sucks. And it's the same with this. It's like not eating healthy sucks. Because you become this blob, you know, even if even if you look healthy from the outside, um, you still have that low energy and that low longevity and the heart problems and uh so okay chapter six science and the word of wisdom science is slowly catching up to the word of wisdom revelation many christian traditions have promoted a vegan diet especially the seventh day adventists um 35 percent of seventh day adventists are vegetarian hugh nibley says they have always been better at, than us at living the word of wisdom they feel god has revealed the health code and they are outspoken about sharing it as a religious duty we should feel the same. John Wesley promoted vegetarianism. Islam, Buddhism, and other world religions have long promoted elimination of animal products in the diet. Joseph Smith taught the need to obey God before being blessed. Some things in the Word of Wisdom are contrary to modern fads, and you need to take a leap of faith. However, most of this has been around for millennia. So this is not a big shocker, you know? World religions, people who care about God and who care about making the world a better place, from whatever religion they are, 
they've known about this for a long time. And, you know, I've been up to the Krishna temple there in uh, Salem a couple times, and uh, they have these big posters in Utah here. These big posters where um, they have several LDS church leaders, Latter-day Saint church leaders, who say, yeah, stop with all this meat. Um, you know, Brigham Young, Joseph Fielding Smith, um, uh, I'm pretty sure Joseph Fielding, he didn't eat meat. Um, and there's these others. Uh, um, and it shows that at this uh, Krishna temple. And it's ironic how we want to, like, bash on them for not eating meat. Um, anyway, like it says in, in this book earlier, DNC, which is our most up-to-date, most clear, you know, not going through millennia of translations, that revelation says, like, you don't need it. It's just for emergencies, basically. Um, and when you don't have access to, like, fresh fruits, vegetables, and grains. Um, so uh, one thing to avoid those, there's often these militant camps of, oh, you're, you know, this evil person if you eat any meat or if you use any animal products or any leather or, you know, like, yeah, maybe we do need to, you know, like the, the, you know, the stewardship of the earth, the stewardship of the animals. And, and this book talks later about that as well. But I do think that's something to not get too into. Um, there is that scripture about like people who forbid meat, you know, like not to mess with that. Um, one, that's an old scripture and we have newer revelation that clarifies that. But for two, when we want to get into, oh, animal rights are the same as human rights. That's a bunch of nonsense. Animals were made by God for people and, um, you know, if you are going to use, uh, dairy, like try to get it from your own animals or, you know, take care of the animals, like be a good steward. Um, and, uh, yeah. But anyway, the, um, if, you know, like there's people who just don't have access to good food and they, uh, and, and I hesitate to even bring this up, but I do just to be fair and to and to avoid extremism. Um, the thing is, is that most people who have access to listen to this lecture and this book and all this, um, they are living in a land of plenty and they really don't need all of this animal supplement. Um, but uh, anyway. Um, but yeah. Let's let's go on. I think that's going to be brought up again later here. Um, let's see here. Yeah, the Krishna guys. Those guys do. Uh, um, they do dairy, but they try to. Hey, can you guys play upstairs, please? Thank you. Okay. All right. Go play upstairs so I can finish what I'm doing. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Uh, yeah, they'll, you know, their thing is like, hey, we help the animals, they help us. Um, but anyway, from, from the science that I'm aware of, the people who, uh, who you know, the more the, of the animal products they eliminate, the healthier they are. And that's the big point here. Um, And and at least we can say a dramatic reduction needs to take place um, for ourselves, for the animals, for everything. Uh, my main interest in the word of wisdom is the is personal health. Again, I'm not one of those people who you know is going to jump in front of a of a train to help help save a turkey or something like that. Um, anyway, we have. Uh, more science now but unhealthy people science doesn't equal wisdom we always interpret the word of wisdom through contemporary science for example scientist and apostle john widso spoke of using meat very sparingly and even suggested eliminating animal products from the diet 
He spoke of the need to heed the positives as much as the negatives of the word of wisdom, the do's, not just the don'ts. He says church members aren't living up to this. He speaks of how vegetarians have often excelled in sports, and how meat proteins are more expensive and wasteful, and how all we need is found in vegetarianism. And, of course, check out the documentary Game Changers um, on that. In the Korean War, the autopsies showed the Koreans were healthy, and the Americans, eating lots of meat, were all predisposed for atherosclerosis. Um, and something that's a little bit related is, I just reviewed some of my Hugh Nibley notes, and he talks about how in World War One, the soldiers had Bibles in their pockets. And in World War Two, they had rabbit's foot in their pockets and luck charms and all this. And the point he was making is we'd forgot about God, you know, and we don't care about God anymore. And when we don't listen to the word of wisdom, you know, the scripture, the religious message on how to eat, you know, like we're up a creek without a paddle. Get 10% of calories from fat, 10% from protein, 80% from complex carbs. Avoid irreversible diabetes-related nerve damage by catching your health early on as possible. But yes, you can reverse diabetes with this, and many have. All right, Chapter 7, Common Objections. It takes money to promote a message, and drug companies and dairy companies don't earn money by promoting whole food plant-based. That's why you aren't taught this as much in schools, TV, etc. Food executives call marketing unprocessed food a fool's game. The DNC warns us of conspiring people. This certainly applies to food companies today who will do whatever they can to get money, intentionally making foods in addictive combinations. Uh, yeah, secret combinations, right? What's in your food? It's a secret combination. Figure out how to get rid of that though. We ignore healthy food when unhealthy is present a rat will die of starvation when offered both food and cocaine regularly that's this idea that you can't just let your kids choose you have to promote you have to give them healthy choices you can't you know give them the choice of of bad versus good give them the choice of good versus good um uh fake food leads to loss of regular self-control Remember Joel Furman's calorie-consuming monster? We don't have these overpowering cravings if we detoxify our bodies. We eat unnaturally rich foods, as mentioned earlier. Your taste buds uh, will adapt to what you give them within a short period of time. Junk food leads to a loss of the ability in our biological feedback systems, with leptin, etc., to tell when we are full. Here are some myths. 1. We need meat for adequate protein. 2. Eggs are an ideal protein. 3. Milk is good for our bones. 4. Carbs are dangerous. 5. We need more healthy fats in our diet. 6. Olive oil, fish oil, coconut oil are health foods. 7. It can't be wrong if everyone's doing it. 8. If something is labeled natural, it's good for you. 9. Junk food is fun, popular, and will make you happy. 10. Eating whatever foods you find delicious is part of living the good life. 11. Serving people rich, scrumptious foods shows you love them. So there's 11 myths. 11 food myths. What of scientists who disagree with WFPB? The bulk of scientific evidence truly points in this direction. Many who follow USDA still have heart disease, diabetes, stroke, etc. They blame it on factors like genetics, lack of exercise, or the environment, when really their diet is whack. Even if they know of a healthier diet, they don't promote it because they think people are too weak to successfully do it. Note, uh, promote the best, not just what you think people can handle. You know, this is how they rise. Humanity thrives on being challenged to become great. Not on invitations to be mediocre. Many fad diets look like they're working because they're often better than the standard American diet. But that doesn't mean they are the optimal diet, like Atkins Keto, particularly leading to heart disease. And even a placebo can have real profound psychological effects resulting in physical changes, the psychobiological effects. 
Green smoothies, they aren't as good as whole foods. They have less fiber, etc. Fiber tells you you're full. We also can't neglect starches or we'll have uh, not enough energy. Supplements lack many phytochemicals found in whole foods. The apple has thousands of antioxidants impacting thousands of metabolic reactions. We can't even calculate what's going on. Almost every chemical affects another chemical and almost infinite number of biological consequences when we take things and change them from their natural state. Did they have a Vitamix 200 years ago? No, yet they were healthy. We can't just go off active ingredients. We are still learning about the complexity of anatomy and nutrition science. And again, I'll, I'll say green smoothies, you know, in a Vitamix are a lot better than you know, a lot of things. And sometimes they're a good, uh, you know, hey, I'm busy and this is what I'm going to do. Or, hey, I'm going to do this for a couple weeks and uh, get a jump start, you know. But yeah, she's making this point that there are disadvantages and you can't just do that constantly forever. Um, let's see here. When you stop eating bad stuff, at first you feel bad. Don't let that trick you. It's the same with stopping smoking or cocaine. The word of wisdom does not encourage us to just eat right for your type. Among WFPB, there is an extremely broad variety. Prophets have said, uh, and note here, prophets have said regarding music. I like to make these, you know, analogies across fields. Uh, what they said regarding music can be applied to nutrition. There's so much good, you don't need to waste your time with the bad. Find a diet that works for you within the broad scope of WFPB. WFPB, whole food plant-based, is the only diet clinically proven to eliminate heart disease. What's more radical? The diet that causes many chronic diseases or the one that eliminates them. Moderation in all things is not a scriptural statement. WFPB is the way the vast majority of humans have eaten in recorded history. The standard American diet is the real radical diet. Many good Latter-day Saints ignore the positive aspects of the word of wisdom. This hurts relationships, dulls spiritual sensitivity, etc. Note, perhaps the Savior would say to them to live these principles when they ask, What lack I yet? Will they, like the young man, go away sorrowing, not willing to consecrate what the Lord asks? Note, it can also lead to hormonal imbalance, contributing to same-sex attraction. Think of all the estrogen and dairy products which men consume. The milk-producing cows. Dad? No, what's what? I think... Okay, hold on, hold on. Stop, stop, stop. Is this something you can tell Mom? Because I'm really busy right now. Sorry, I'm trying to get this done. Um, the estrogen and dairy products men consume, the milk producing cows are pregnant after all. Perhaps we've discovered one of the mysteries as to why boys, boys from good religious homes can develop same-sex attraction. And you know what? Rake me under the coals for that. I don't care. I'm going to say it like it is. And uh, somebody needs to. Most Americans eat only 7% of fruit and vegetable. We get 51% of food in a processed form. And I'm going to say one more thing. You know, Back when we weren't taking all these medicines, back when we weren't taking all this fake crap, you know, did we have as much depression? Did we have as much mental illness? Did we have as much gender issues? Not even close. So the connection between healthy eating, you know, the word of wisdom, and many spiritually dangerous problems today is a real connection. The word of wisdom is not some temporal thing. It is a spiritual commandment. The DNC says there is no such thing as spiritual temporal. It's one and the same. Okay, let's see here. Most Americans eat only 7% fruit and vegetable. We get 51% of food in a processed form. WFPB eliminates virtually all of the top 10 sources of calories in the American diet as identified by the USDA. Soda pop, cake, pastries, hamburgers, pizza, potato chips, white rice, white bread, cheese, beer, french fries. The DNC says the word of wisdom is adapted to the weakest of saints, so we know this can be done. Many people give things up, as seen in converts giving up tea, coffee, alcohol, etc., which they thought would be impossible to be baptized. Uh, note, then the Holy Ghost helps them even more after baptism. Similarly, we can give up meat, dairy, processed foods, etc., and note, will this not bring an increase of the Holy Ghost and thus more power to make good choices? Will it not make sin less appealing? Many are so excited about the new life ahead that they don't even experience withdrawals. Does a butterfly miss being a caterpillar? Uh, note, choose to eat WFPB and be firm in your resolve. Then you don't have to waste time 
debating the weaker side of your character and devils, which are very good debaters. Which is harder, to give up certain foods or to live with chronic illness? And yes, some chronic illness can be reversed by nutrition. The ability to savor subtle delights of whole foods may take some time as your palate needs to adjust. Eating real food is delicious and sustainable. The church, with its lines on what you can't have, has spared us from many illnesses. But we have yet to access the full blessings from fully heating DNC 89. Chapter 8, Stewards of Our Bodies, the Earth, and Its Creatures. <sighs> Let's see if I can get these. DNC 49, 20 through 21. Quote, It is not given that one man should possess that which is above another, wherefore the world lieth in sin. And woe be unto man that sheddeth blood, or wasteth flesh, and hath no need. Close quote. In the Bible, eating of animals is only introduced after the flood, which destroyed vegetation on earth. Note it was after the flood that human lifespans began to dramatically increase. Decrease. Genesis 9.9, 9, the Joseph Smith translation says, quote, And surely blood shall not be shed, only for meat to save your lives, and the blood of every beast will I require at your hands. So I need to double check that. Eating of animals introduced only after the flood. I'm, I'm not sure. i got to recheck that. But this is what it says here, and I think it's right. Uh, and, um, all right, let's get these kids to be quiet. Okay, meat may be ordained for our use, but not for our abuse. Hugh Nibley suggests using meat sparingly means spare the animals. He says the needy farmer, the needy family in winter has right to using animals, but those who don't need it have no right to them. He also says that, quote, God will justify the taking of animal life to sustain man's want, but he reserves a special blessing for those who place their nobility before their necessity, close quote. Source in the text. How can animals find joy in filling the measure of their creation if we treat them so badly in the factories, etc.? Using animal meats results in much more water than farming. It also creates more greenhouse gases than all the transportation. We could uh, much more easily give up dairy than give up transportation. Livestock industry leads in deforestation and reduction of biodiversity. An anthropogenic user of land, they make... 130 times more waste than humans, leading to widespread pollution of land and water. The earth can produce enough for everyone's need, but not for everyone's greed. Brigham Young spoke of our savage nature going away as we use plants, not animals, for food. Joseph Smith had his fellow Zions camp members not kill a snake among them, but encourage them to become tame so the animals could follow suit. And again, all the references to this are in the text and full quotes. George Q. Cannon speaks of an increased spirit of God as we stop hurting animals and peace then re uh, reigning on earth. And, uh, you know, I'll pour, something that I learned recently, Charles Darwin, he comes up with evolution of species, and it's this Antichrist movement that arises at the similar time of Joseph Smith, um, the books that led up to Darwin, and, you know, he reads the uh, all these. And uh, Darwin was this guy who, like, killed animals. He beat animals for pleasure like who's this twisted dude so like i just want to throw that out there um i despise evolutionary theory i think it's a criminal that it's being taught in religious schools um 99 of all schools teach it um and uh it's a tragedy and it's one of my big focuses of my research and teaching um, Heber C. Kimball wrote of not hurting animals, but respecting that they too have life the same as we do, and that the animals are doing their jobs, so should we do ours. Lorenzo Snow says the animals we kill unnecessarily may rise up someday and condemn us. And that's a big, uh, big theme in the Krishna, uh, 
the Hindu folks, they'll they'll show these pictures where there's this human with a cow with an ox head, and there's this cow with a human head, and this guy's got this axe, and this human with this cow with the human head is like, oh no, and uh, you know. So Joseph F. Smith said, "The love of nature is akin to the love of God." More reports show WFPB can cure bipolar, sleep apnea, skin problems like boils and rashes. Hey, you need to talk to mom because I have to finish this, okay? Sorry, I'm almost done, okay? I can't help you right now. Please go upstairs. We can talk when I'm done, yes, okay? But not right now. You'll have to talk to me about that later because I'm busy. Okay. Whole food plant-based can cure bipolar, sleep apnea, skin problems like boils and rashes, depression, panic attacks, reflux, eyesight, hearing, common sicknesses, and rarely getting sick, uh, headaches, blood pressure, faster recovery when you do get sick, decreased anxiety, etc. <clears throat> Chapter 9. Why doesn't the church tell us these things? DNC says it's not by commandment or restraint. Heber J. Grant says some of the sweetest saints he knew disobeyed the word of wisdom. Very noble, uh, some very noble people are yet not necessarily the healthiest. And I'll just throw in a, a side note here that uh, consider Thomas S. Monson a mighty prophet, obviously one of the most spiritual righteous people ever. His biography shows they ate a lot of meat growing up in his home. And later in his life, he was known for having very bad diabetes. The Lord sustained and prolonged his health but it was still a great hindrance to him and perhaps shortened his life. And remember, all you guys were freaking out about me connecting meat consumption to diabetes. Um, remember, the fat clogs the insulin receptors. Okay. Consider this, uh, another side note here, consider this positive example. George Albert Smith would bring a jar of wheat with him wherever he traveled, eating in members' homes even. His escort would say, we are having stew for dinner. President Smith is having wheat. That is amazing courage. Historically, it's taken time for the word of wisdom to be understood in the church and adapted into policy, culture, etc. We learn line upon line as we're ready to receive it. Joseph Smith urged uh, being merciful more than exacting when it comes to this and other matters. Heber J. Grant tried preaching the word of wisdom and few listened. After a sermon on it, members giving him Dinner had the nerve to offer him tea and coffee. Grant showed the saints that they were spending more money on tea and coffee than they were on tithes. Grant says he was called a crank for his views on the word of wisdom, but said that he therefore expected to go on being a crank to the end. You know, um, the codifying of the word of wisdom into temple recommend law, so to speak, where there's this and this and this that you cannot do to have a recommend. You know, you cannot be drinking alcohol and have a temple recommend. You cannot be drinking coffee and have a temple recommend. I remember a time when, on my mission, I had a couple of folks ask me. They were members of the church and, they were, you know, trying starting to get into some slippy habits of, of the coffee and the tea. And they're like, "Am I really not going to go to heaven for not for for you know having the, having some occasional coffee and tea?" And I'm, you know, it's like, well, no, heaven's about your moral character, you know. But you got to realize the implications, you know, it's like a big part of heaven is obedience, right? And willingness to put aside, you know, your ways and follow in faith. And like, it's a little thing, but, you know, it's a, it's a big thing because it's something that we've been specifically asked to do. And, you know, what's interesting is it's set us aside as a people culturally a lot. That, hey, we're the people who don't drink tea and coffee. You know, we're the people who don't do alcohol. And, you know, it even says in the in the New Testament, Jesus is going to come back and there's going to be this wedding feast where, you know, there's going to be the fruit of the vine there, you know. So so we have the word of wisdom to help us right now. There's all these aspiring, you know, secret combinations and all this to where, you know, I don't know what the, what the word of wisdom is going to look like exactly in the future. But we know what it looks like right now and we can live that in faith. And you know what? We can avoid, you know, in today's trashy ghetto culture, you're going to avoid a lot of stupid parties and stupid, uh, you know, 
fornication and unchastity with with just totally getting rid of all alcohol you know all fermented you know it's just that's the way we got to do it right now and uh and you know it's it's uh the law of nature i don't think it's ever going to be healthy to you know be drinking wine all the time um and you know there's the philosophies of men and we just i don't have all the answers but we do have the ability to do some things in faith and and that's just that's okay you know um Another problem with enforcing positive aspects of DNC 89 is how hard it is to measure compliance with alcohol and things like that. It's easy to say yes or no. You know, there's some there's some obvious no's, you know, that we could do that. We could go there and we have. And, you know, there's a potential issue of with saying these official yes and no of, you know, oh, you're keeping the word of wisdom if you're not drinking alcohol. Yeah, but not really. You know, so that's a it's a helpful that we made that line in the sand to eliminate, you know, a lot of major problems, but it's also in some ways a hindrance. If we take that as saying, I'm good, you know, I don't drink alcohol. I'm good. I keep the tourism. I can do whatever else I can go eat McDonald's all the time. You know, it's like, no. And, and, you know, you see this person, like there's this person who drinks their tea and coffee, but they're like eating healthy and yeah, they're going to be in way better health. Than some Latter Day Saint who's eating junk food yet has their tea and coffee. So, and they're finding out the problems with tea and coffee now. And you know, so there's a lot of health advocates not in the church who are saying, "Yeah, stop that tea and coffee. It's terrible." All right, so let's move on. Uh, Joseph Smith said, "Quote: I have tried for a number of years to get the minds of the saints prepared to receive the things of God, but we frequently see some of them, after suffering all they have for the work of God." They fly to pieces like glass as soon as anything comes that is contrary to their traditions. They cannot stand the fire at all. Close quote. History of the Church 6, 184-5. George Albert Smith said the Lord always wanted people who would listen, but couldn't find it. He wanted to exalt them, but they wouldn't have it. He goes on to say how the Lord could not reveal to us a single principle further than he had done, or he would have upset the whole of us. Perhaps the emphasis on not doing the wrong things like alcohol is a step closer to doing the right things like plant-based eating. Almost done. Almost done. We aren't that different from the early saints when it comes to resisting revelations in the word of wisdom. Perhaps other items are far more important. Okay. Guys, please, upstairs. Okay. I've asked you to go upstairs and you're not listening. Okay. Perhaps other items are far more important, such as getting us to be baptized, keep the Sabbath, pray, not commit adultery, be honest, have charity, etc., and we must focus on the most key items needed for salvation. And note, it seems we have not graduated from the early grades. We aren't, as a people, taking on the higher grades yet. And of course, as we do graduate, we're going to realize that when we are living the Word of Wisdom more carefully, it's going to help us with our Sabbath, our praying, our chastity, our honesty and charity, etc. So when you're sick, you're not, you're not able to go help other people. The DNC says we shouldn't be commanded in all things. Often the gap between what we believe we should do and what we do is enormous. Statistics show Utah Saints are fatter than non-Utah Saints. You could call them fatter day saints. Um, or latter day ain'ts, or latter day complaints, as Hiram Andrus likes to say. Why settle for only moderate obedience and thus only moderate blessings? Lorenzo Snow said the day of introducing to the saints that they should not shed animal blood and refrain from eating meat was near at hand. Ezra Taft Benson said we are digging an early grave with our teeth, and we need a generation of Daniel-like people who refuse to eat the king's meat whose, and whose countenance show it. Gordon B. Hinckley says he wishes we would live the word of wisdom more fully and that we would be blessed if we would try to. 
Instead of asking, why haven't church leaders spoken more of this? We would do well to ask, why haven't I listened to them more closely, as they've already encouraged this? And of course, there's a ton more than is presented in this book. Heber J. Grant ate very little meat. He was known for working long hours without fatigue. George Albert Smith ate no meat except for um, during winters. His meals are simple and nourishing. Remember the jar of wheat story. Joseph Fielding Smith's wife, Jessie Evans, said Joseph doesn't eat meat. They eat lots of fruits and vegetables. Ezra Taft Benson was sparing in his use of meat and generous in his use of fresh vegetables and grains. As you see, many church leaders aren't waiting for some official message to act on the Council of DNC 89. In as little as two weeks of cutting animal products, headaches can go away, menstrual pain becomes lessened, and the body manages its own weight. The grains, if it gains, if it, you, your body will gain the weight if you need to gain weight and lose weight if you need to lose weight. Chapter 10, Promised Blessings. Harold B. Lee said, if we will be like Daniel and refuse the king's meat, we will be protected when death comes to every household that doesn't keep the commandments of God. DNC 4531 speaks of an overflowing scourge to come where desolating sickness shall cover the land and pestilences of every kind. And uh, perhaps it's a superbug from complete resistance to antibiotics. George Q. Cannon says that when pestilence comes, many who are now careless about the word of wisdom will likely reform and pay attention to the councils. He says we as a people are promised greater safety than other people, but that is predicated upon our obedience. And we shouldn't expect the blessing without obedience. Which reminds me of something that Elder Bednar put in a footnote of one of his general conference talks recently, that we should pray for more commandments to keep so that we can get more blessings. Because you can only get blessings when you obey uh, commandments. And if you're looking for more blessings and more commandments, here's a great place to start. The Word of Wisdom. Boyd K. Packer taught, the Word of Wisdom is a key to individual revelation. That's why this is so important, folks. It's bringing us closer to God. It's revealing the mind of God. For observant Jews, their dietary laws are, a Jewish author puts it, quote, a daily commitment in action to one's faith, a formal choice, a quiet self-discipline. It's okay to be different and separate from society. God's people have always been called to do that. Food is a great vehicle to remind us and others that we are a separate people. Some suffering in this life is our own fault because of not heeding these things. Apparently DNC 89 is an adapted version for the weak and weakest of saints. Perhaps a more ver full version is to come and with it more blessings. Why not seek these? This brings up a good point that there are mysteries. There are there are mysteries. There are hidden things. There are higher laws. And it's not a sin to try to, within reasonable parameters, obey those higher laws. And it's a plain fact. And, you know, Alma talks about it. Everybody talks about it. DNC talks about it. How the more good you do, the more you're going to have access to higher truth and knowledge about the more good that you can do. And then the less good that you do, the less access you have to information uh, and power to do more good things. Um, this is the secret that uh, to weight loss everyone is looking for. WFPB can cure cancers and other heart and brain diseases. Imagine a family home evening where you have to tell your kids that you have cancer and you won't be with them much longer. Is this not motivation enough to bring you to eating healthy, to adopt this the abundant evidences and, and spiritual admonitions to eat this more healthy way, this whole food plant-based way? Gandhi says those who are vegetarian just for helping a health issue fall back and to stay vegetarian you need a moral basis this is important um yeah uh um there's some more guidelines in the appendixes i'm going to wrap this up uh this has been a great book great study 
this is this is the uh, cover of the book here. So go check it out. It's amazing. There's also a Facebook group, Discovering the Word of Wisdom, um, where there's a lot of support on this topic. So that's it. Um, this lecture, these notes, again, they're free at richardsonstudies.com. So welcome to get that resource, send it to your friends. This is a, you know, it's it's a short little thing, short little summary to maybe push people uh, into, you know, a small little looking into this where, you know, there's just not a lot of information on this out there that's, uh, that's in bite size. Uh, there is the more you look, but hopefully this can help. And uh, thanks for, thanks for participating with me in this. My name is Nate Richardson.